Hi, it's Thomas Cook from Toronto's real estate team at Remax, and here is our February 2014 Toronto Real Estate Market Report. The big story for February is the huge year-over-year -year price increase for single-family detached homes in Toronto. I'll comment more on that in this broadcast as we go through the market report. So, let's review some of the Toronto Real Estate Board statistics and see what this is all about. Sales were 7% below average for February with 5,731 houses and condominiums changing hands in all the districts. Condo townhouses and high-rise suites had a 33% share of the market with 1,888 units being sold. The February average sale price for all GTA homes came in at 533193 That's up 8.3% from 2013. I'll show you a graph of the average sale prices over the past several years in just a moment. The active listing inventory is one of the strongest indicators of how smooth or outrageous the market's going to be. We had a 5.3% decline in inventory for the month of February compared to historical numbers, and lower by 12% from last year at this time. The sales to listings or percent chance of selling ratio is how we determine what type of market we're actually in. 24 to 28 percent is a neutral market, below 24 percent is a buyer's market, and above 28 percent is a seller's market. In January that ratio finished at 40.9 percent, up 6 percent from last year's market dip and a bit below recent historical averages for the month. By the numbers the overall market is in moderate seller market territory, although single-family houses are at a busy 51 percent for the month. One of the statistics we sometimes hear is the number of months of inventory on the market, which is also used as an indication of how busy the market is. It's easy to calculate, just divide 40.9 into 100, and we see the result is 2.4 months. The days on market average for the entire Toronto Real Estate Board was 26, 10 days faster than January, and very impressive when you consider the very cold weather we had during the month. So let's look at what's happening in the downtown Toronto condo market. West of Young and south of Bloor in the CO1 Treb district, the average sale price for February was 438276 That number represents a modest 4% increase from the same time last year. With 234 condo sales in the month, the numbers were up about 10% compared to last year. The ratio of sales to listings moved up to 21%, which leaves CO1 still in buyer market territory. The average days on market came in at 32, which was 13 days faster than in January. Now, east of Young and south of Bloor in the CO8 Treb district, the average sale price for February was 413721 That number represents 11.2% increase from February of 2013. And with 99 condo sales in the month, the numbers were up 27% compared to last year. The ratio of sales to listings increased to 37.2 from 29% in January. That number put CO8 in moderate seller market territory. The average days on market came in at 27, which was 21 days faster than in January. To summarize, with both listing inventory up modestly, and sales doing fine compared to one year ago, the condo market downtown is again looking terrific for buyers and okay for realistic sellers who list their homes based on current market conditions. Looking at the graph for average resale prices for the past four years, February is continuing the trend we've seen since 2011 of each subsequent month outdoing the same month in the year previous. So far, those increases have been moderate, but a lot depends on more listings coming on the market to restrain prices from increasing at too high a pace. This month, our special market focus is on detached houses in the City of Toronto. Due to lack of available land, the supply of new detached homes is extremely limited, so new construction is restricted to one-off or small infill projects. For the most part, then, that leaves us with the existing housing stock, some of which goes back to the Victorian era of the late 1800s. The graph on this page shows the average detailed house in Toronto now sells for just over 955000 That's up an astounding 16% over the same average one year ago. 
This is the inevitable result of tight inventory market combined with a large group of move-up buyers transitioning from smaller ho houses and especially condominiums. Also at play is the issue of public transit and highway congestion. People want to avoid a two-hour commute every day to and from work and prefer to live in the city rather than around it. So, what's the best way to make your first baby step into a Toronto's real estate market? The best first step is to go on a market experience tour of condo or house neighborhoods with one of our team members. What a tour is not intended to do is show you homes with the intention that you'd buy one. What it is intended to do is to give you a chance to get a clearer idea of what's available on the market in your favorite parts of the city and in your price range without worrying about being pressured into having to make an immediate buying decision. Once you've had your tour, we want you to go back home and think about what you saw. You'll then be better able to set up a good home buying plan and make smart decisions about where and when you want to be in your new home. You can sign up for your condo tour at dailydowntowncondotours.com. That's dailydowntowncondotours.com. And a tour of houses at dailytorontohometours.com. That's dailytorontohometours.com. Remember to check back here in early April for our March Toronto Real Estate Market Report.